Okay, let's talk about the LCM. And this is not to be confused with the LCD, although the LCD it has a lot in common with the LCM. This is uh, the lowest common denominator, and this is the lowest common multiple. So we're going to be focusing in on the lowest common multiple. And uh, this is important at all levels of math. You really kind of start learning this in more like elementary, primary uh, level mathematics, but it continues on in middle school and high school. And you'd be surprised. A lot of students don't know how to find the LCM. Matter of fact, I want to show you a couple problems here, and I'm curious to see if you could explain uh, to someone, let's say you have a younger brother or sister, and you wanted to explain to them, hey, what? Here, this is what the LCM is, and this is how you find it. Could you do that? I probably, uh, if I had to guess, maybe half of you, maybe even less, could actually do this because this could be a little bit confusing. But we're going to take the confusion out of the LCM here in just one second. Uh, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I've come to the conclusion all students, I mean everyone out there, can be successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, you have to be willing to do the work. Okay, If you're not going to take notes or do the homework, then you're not going to be able to learn math. Okay, So you've got to be willing to, to uh, put the work in. Okay, But beyond that, what a student needs is clear and understandable math instruction. Math instruction that keeps them engaged, that they like and understand, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, I'm going to leave links to all my uh, math help in the description of this video. Also, if you happen to be preparing for a test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, uh, GRE, GMAT, maybe a nursing school entrance exam, teacher certification exam. There's a lot of tests out there uh, like this. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, have fantastic middle and high school math courses that you uh, may want to check out. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. Okay, let's get into the LCM. Super important stuff for all levels of mathematics. So let's start off by answering the question. Okay, we are talking about the lowest common multiple. Let's start with this right here. What is a multiple? Okay, I mean, uh, first of all, if we're talking about the lowest common multiple, it's probably a good idea to figure out what is a multiple. Well, here is an example of what multiples are. So let's take two, and what are multiples of two? Well, we're gonna take two, it's kinda like our times table, and just start multiplying it by one. So two times one is two, that's a multiple of two. Two times two is four, so four is a multiple of two. Two times three is six. Six is a multiple of two, and so forth. So these are all multiples of two. So here's three. What's a multiple of three? Well, three times one is three. So three is a multiple of three. Three times two is six. Six is a multiple of three, and so forth. Okay, so these are all multiples of these respective numbers. These are uh, multiples of three, and these are multiples of two, and it just continues on into infinity. Okay, so before we even start talking about what is the lowest common multiple, you know, we, first of all, we just got to get a handle on, hey, what is a multiple? So this is uh, examples of what multiples are. Okay, so now let's move on to the lowest common multiple. So let's get uh, back to our two numbers here, two and three. And let's suppose we wanted to find the lowest common multiple uh, between two and three. Okay, so here again is our list of multiples, uh, all the multiples for two. Well, it continues on to infinity, of course, and all the multiples of three. But you can see here I have some things circled. So on this list of two, let's notice that 24 is a multiple of two. But 24 is also a multiple of 3, okay? So 24 happens to be a common multiple. These are common, okay? So pretty com you know, pretty much like common sense, right? So 18 is a multiple of 3, and 18 also is a multiple of 2. So these are common multiples. They're like, oh, yeah, these are multiples that both 2 and 3 have in common. They also have 12 in common, right? I'm just looking at the list. So 12 is a common multiple between two and three, but which is the lowest? What is the lowest common 
multiple. Well, I got to study my little list here, right? So I'm like three, six. All right, this is six here. I don't see, uh, see a three there, so I'm not two, four, six. Hey, look, they have six in common, and this happens to be the lowest uh, multiple they have in common. So we're going to call that the lowest common multiple. So by definition, the lowest common multiple between two and three is six, and that's what the lowest common multiple is. So uh, you know, again, we want to make sure you understand what a multiple is, what common multiples are, and then again, what is the lowest common multiple. But now what I'm going to talk about is how do we find the lowest common multiple? We, of course, uh, can list out all the multiples, like a bunch of multiples here, and then just kind of search for those multiples and identify the lowest common multiple. That I mean, that's a definitely a good practical way of doing it. But we really need a better technique uh, to deal with larger numbers and whatnot. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, get to this uh, problem. So let's say I wanted to find the lowest common multiple between 2 and 3. Well, we already um, have seen that the answer is 6. But this is the way I want you to be able to find lowest common multiple. So what, you, what we're going to do is take the two numbers, 2 and 3, and we're going to prime factor those numbers. In other words, uh, you're going to construct what we call a factor tree. Now we're going to break up the factor. So 2, okay, is uh, its factors is 1 times 2. We can't factor beyond this. So these are prime factors, 1 times 2. And then 3, uh, its factors is simply just 1 and 3. Remember, 1 is always a factor of anything. So the uh, lowest common multiple is going to be the product of all the prime factors. Okay, so let's go ahead and list all the prime factors. So 1 is a prime factor of all these. Between the two numbers you're looking at, we have to have them represented here. So 1, okay, so 2 is a prime factor. So we got that represented. 1 is already represented right here. And then we need a 3. Okay, so now when I multiply all my prime factors together, 1 times 2 times 3, guess what? That is 6. That was the answer. Remember, we identified that over here. Okay. All right, so if you understand that, let's go ahead and take a look at a problem. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to figure this out. Okay, I'm going to show you here in a second. So tell me what the lowest common multiple is of uh, between 10 and 16. Okay, what is the lowest common multiple? So if some of you want to make this list 10 and 16, and then go ahead and you know identify the lowest common multiple. Well, you could do that, but again, you're going to have to be able to do it this way as well. So I'm going to show you both ways here in just one second. But if you want to just test yourself, go ahead and pause the video and work on this. But let's go ahead and get going here. And uh, first things we need to do is to uh, look at the prime factors between 10 and 16. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how we want to do that. Okay, let me bring this up, scoot this up right there. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm going to start constructing a factor uh, tree. So 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. Again, 1 is always a factor, but this is good enough for now. And I'm circling prime factors. In other words, 2 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number. So 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. Okay, of course, I have that written right here. And then 16, you can just start breaking this up this way. 2 times 8, you circle your prime factors as you go. So 2 is prime. 8 is not prime. I can keep breaking this up. So that's 2 times 4. So 2 is prime. So I can keep going. 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. So 16 is uh, equivalent to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. All these 2s here is what? Well, I can write that as 2 to the 4th. Okay, and 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. Okay, so if you understand this so far, then we're going to be uh, doing really well here. So let's take a look at 10. 10 is the same thing as uh, 2 times 5. And I'll, uh, just to be super clear about this, 2 is same, the same thing as 2 to the first power. You're going to see why this is important here in a second. And 16 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the fourth power. Okay, so here's how it works. Okay, the LC, um, well, not the LLL, -L -L, the LCM is we're going to have to write these prime factors. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, the prime factors we have. We have two, this is two to the first, 
and this is 2 to the 4th. Okay, now, of course, 1 is always a prime factor. We don't even really have to have it represented. But um, so we're like, okay, we have to write a 2 as part of our, our prime factors for LCM. But which 2 do we write? Do we write 2 to the 1st or 2 to the 4th? You always select the highest power of that number. So here, if I have 2 to the 1st and 2 to the 4th, I'm going uh, in terms of... Uh, the prime factor for 2, I have to put the highest power of 2. So 2 to the 4th will go into my prime factor for my LCM. Okay, so that takes care of these two right there. But I have to have all my prime factors represented, so I have to have that 5 as well. So my lowest common multiple is going to be 2 to the 4th times 5. So what's 2 to the 4th? Well, remember, 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which, of course, is 16. So my LCM is going to be 16 times 5. That's what this is right here. And I could just do that multiplication. 16 times 5 is 80. That is the answer. Okay, so lowest common multiple is 80. If you got that right, that's excellent. But let's take a look at uh, doing it the good old-fashioned way here. Let's uh, list out all these multiples of 10 and 16. So multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, on and on and on. And then 16, it's 16. 16 uh, times 1 is 16. 16 times 2, 32. 16 times 3, 48. 16 times 4, 64. 16 times 5, 80. Finally, we have some uh, common multiples here because none of these multiples are in common. So by definition, this is the lowest common multiple, which is 80. So if you did it this way... That's excellent, but really, you know, I want you to understand how to do it this way, okay? Both ways are important, but if you got this correct, then boy, man, I'll tell you something. You are well on your way of being an awesome math student. Matter of fact, I'm going to uh, go ahead and just reward you with the good old 1981. Uh, this is a what we call a mohawk haircut. It required a lot of hairspray, and I'm glad I don't see these anymore, but back in the day, they were pretty cool, just like your ability to find the LCM. So that's an A plus 100% nice job, okay? So again, uh, a lot of these basic uh, concepts like the LCD, the LCM, uh, most students don't um, know them as well as they think they know them. But this is critically important for your success, not only in arithmetic, but in algebra and beyond. So, you know, don't feel bad if you had to review this because a lot of students uh, need to have reviewed this. And if this video helps you out, then please consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos on my channel from basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all this content. I make it for you, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.